Okay, I'm going to start the learning sponsors and then we'll get into the Shia, okay? A year of learning by the friends of Herb Jeremiah, <coughs> friends uh, Tzvi Ben Zev, friends of Sam Coleman, Shmuel Ben Yako, friends of Gideon Lazinski, Mordechai Shlomo Ben Meir, Bella and David Adler, in memory of her father, Eliyahu Ben Yosef Cohen, those who were inspired by our rabbits in America, Sheila Shapiro, Sarah Esther Malka Bad Mashalom Yusachar, Gail and Leslie Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Mushka Shprinza Bad Yosef Chaim Bechava, Kanan and Mo, ben, Moshe Eliezer Ben Kana, Pesha Bad Shmuel Yitzka Kalevi Vitsipora, Isra Ben Yom Moshe Akorin Bechana, Rexford Friends of Gladys Sherman, Gutta Bad Meir, Michael Klein and Friends of Judah Klein, Yehuda Tzvi Ben Chaim, Marsha Braun, in memory of her husband, Arav Yerachmiel Ben Shmuel, Friends and family of Arthur Ritholtz, Mordechai Yudel ben Baruch Leib HaKohen. Friends and family of Sigi Bessler, Shalom Shraga ben Dov. Friends of Marvin Weinstein, Mordechai Ozer ben Yisrael Ahron. A month of learning by Perry and Jill Meltzer. <coughs> In memory of his mother, Malka Bat Baruch, and his sister Golda Leia Bat David Halevi. Carol and Josh Sanborn, in memory of her father. Yoshua Shia ben Moshe Huda Cohen, Ike and Evelyn Blachor, Hakarada Tovers, continuing recovery from recent surgery. Rabbi Dr. Yankee and Monkey Honig, in memory of his mother, Rabbanit Hensha Ita Bat Chaim Yehuda. Henna and David Grunblatt, in memory of her mother, Reza Bas Chaya. Uh, Jill and Perry Meltzer, <coughs> sorry, in memory of her father, Yaakov and Yosef. B. Pizer, in memory of her stepfather, Avram Michal ben Shmuel Halevi. B. Pizer, in memory of her mother, Rezel Bat Shammai. Jerry and Sharon Glassman, in memory of his mother, Malka Yehudas Bat Eliyahu. Henry Katz and children, in memory of his wife, Lila Leia Mincha Bat Yehuda. A week of learning by Michael and Judith Koretsky, in memory of his brother, Chaim Tzvi ben Gershon, Judy Schiff, in memory of her mother, Chaya Chava Bad Menachem Mendel. Today being the 11th of the month, a day of learning by Pearl and Milton Frank, in memory of their son, Chaim Ben Moshe of Apparel Gittel, by Lynn and Sidney Gold, in memory of their son, Ari Daniel Ben Shlomo Shia, by Sidney and Sandy Gold. No, that's tomorrow. May the Shemas have an Aliyah, Frank, Rafir, Belti, Shir, Shemataliyah, Chol Ben Israel, a good Gaben I'm just going to get a glass of, um, okay. glass of just a cup of water. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a date on the cats your side? Is there a date there? For the cats here? Is there a date? No. It's just a month of learning. No date. And Oh, the cold water or this the water? Cold water is fine, Bob. Thank you. Yes. Okay. okay, in a moment we'll start. Go inside. No, this is fine. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, we're on Kaf Aleph, Famud Aleph, very top of the Amud. Okay, is where we're going to start. Okay. Remember that uh, we've seen clearly the example of the issue that does the giving a item to an artisan, and does the artisan the artisan doing some work which improves the the what he received. Okay, does that imply that the artisan has acquired the item? We've already seen in the past that any major change, okay, to the item could be considered a basis for acquisition. Okay, 
And in, in doing so, we pointed out, the Gemara points out, that clearly when, when there's been an example of a name change to the object, that could very well be enough of an example of, of uh, change to imply acquisition. We're going to see now, as we go through today's Gemara a bit, what about a change in the appearance Okay, you haven't changed perhaps the object itself per se, but what a change in the appearance of the object. Is that enough to say that there is a acquisition there? And if so, okay, we're going to get into the point uh, that uh, based on that issue, um, is the use of dye Okay, on wool, is the dye, when it's absorbed into the wool, is it such that that uh, changes the nature of the wool, okay, to the point that it's now more than uh, one single item, or are they really, in a sense, like two separate items, okay, and therefore the application of the dye is like the improvement to the wool, okay, and how does that play into the situation? Okay, so that's an attempt to give a short introduction to what we're going to be looking at. Okay, so Kaf Aleph on the top of the Amud, okay, Tanu Rabbanon says the Brighter, Hanotain Eitz Sim Lecharash, one who gives wood to a carpenter or a joiner, right? La Sod Mehem Kisei to make a chair out of it. And he made a bench from it. Safsal, to make a bench. And instead he made a chair out of it. Rabbi Meir, Omer, says Rabbi Meir, notem lo demei eitzav. Okay? That since, in a sense, he did not completely do the item that was required. Okay? Therefore, all you need to do is pay him Okay, the right, he, he, yeah, I was going to say that the, all that needs to be paid is the amount of money for the wood. Okay, that's the point. Okay, Rabbi Yehuda Omer says, Rabbi Yehuda, im hashavach yoter al hayitzia, if the improvement done to the items is greater than the expenses, no lo et yitzia, he pays him the expenses. And if the expenses are greater than the improvement, no tame lo et shevach. He gives them what the amount of money for the just the improvement. In other words, what we're seeing here is uh, basically the uh, artisan would then keep the item himself because it's acquired by the change. Item number one, for by the view of Rabbi Meir. And secondly, that um, since the artisan deviated from the directions, according to Rabbi Yehuda, okay, he's entitled to either the expenses or the improvement, but not both, and whatever is smaller. Okay? That's the implication. Okay, so what happens? Umode Rabbi Meir, and Rabbi Meir, therefore, Goes on and indicates, Im natan eitzim lecharash, la sot mehem kisena eh. If he gave wood to the carpenter or to the joiner to make a an attractive chair, va'asam mehem kisei chaor, and he made something that's an ugly chair, safsal na'eh, or to make a uh, an attractive uh, bench, va'asa safsal ka'or. And instead, he made an ugly bench. Okay? If the improvement okay, was more than the expenses, he gives him the money for the expenses. But if the uh, expenses are greater than the improvement, then he gives him the money for the improvement. Okay? So now we're going to, so according to Rabbi Meir, it's very clear that some change 
in the object is going to give acquisition. Okay? That's what's going to lead us then to the issue of, is it a simply change in appearance as opposed to a real physical change? Okay? So the sages pondered and raised the following discussion. Yesh shevach simanin al hatzamer. Okay, if there's an improvement by the use of dye on wool, okay? and remember they used plants in the past, okay, to get the and soak it and crush the the plants and soak them in a liquid, boil it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that's what gave them the dye in order to dye the wool. Okay, o ein shevach simanin al or do we say there is no improvement? in this situation, through the use of the dye on the wall. Hey, Chidami, what are we comparing it to? What's our example here? Ilema de gazal simanim. Let's say that somebody stole the, um, the plant uh, that produces the dye, okay? The dye pigments, right? Vedakinhu vetarnihu, okay? And what did he do? Okay, then he ground it up. Okay, and then uh, he, okay, and then he, um, uh, hold on a second, he soaked it, okay, and things like that. And then he used that to dye the wool. Tape he, only stole, he only stole the dye. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Well, okay, he stole the dye pigments, the plants, okay? And then when he ground that up, he soaked it. And okay, and then he used that to dye wool. Okay? It appear, would appear to be the wool that he owned. Okay? The tape clay misham. Okay, you could take from there the right from that. The Kaminhu Bishinui. That therefore he uh, ground it up and did something that made this change. So that would seem to follow the example of Rabbi Meir, that there is an acquisition there on the part of the robber, okay, for that wool. Lo, tzricha. No, we need this why, because we're discussing the following. The gazal simani, okay, that he stole the dye pigments. Shruyin, okay, they were already soaked. Vitzavabahim. And then he used that to do the dye, right? My, what's the situation there? Yesh shevach simanim al gabet semer. That there, there would seem to be an improvement through the dye, okay, by means of the dye on the wall. Da'amarle, why? Because here, it's possible for um, the uh, individual to say, okay, for the owner of the dye herbs, Right to say, right? Havli simanai de shaklitinu. Give me back my um, plants, my dye pigments that you took. O Dilma, or perhaps en shevach simanim al gabe hatsama. Or perhaps we're going to say that the dye is so, so absorbed, okay, by into the wall that there is no real improvement here by the dye pigments regarding the wool, okay? Da amarle, because then the robber can say back to the owner, lit lach gabai, v'lit lo mide. I really don't have anything that uh, any longer belongs to you, kind of thing, okay? Amre, and so the sages then raise, okay, this issue. In other words, how could he return the actual dye pigment, okay, since it's so absorbed in the, the wool, okay? So what happens? Amre, so we say as follows, the ein shevach simanim al gabet semer, and if we're going to say then that there really is no improvement, okay, by the dyeing process of the pigments regarding the wool, mi matze amarle, is it possible, really, for him to say, okay, to the other, lach gabai 
that how can he say then that, that I don't have anything anymore that belongs to you? Okay, Namele, let him say then, Havli Simanai, the Afsitinu. Okay, uh, give me the dye pigments that uh, you've made me lose. Okay, Ella. Okay, what rather says the Gemara? Lahach Gisa. Let's examine it from a different perspective, says the Gemara. Ein shevach simanin Let's say that there is no improvement by the dye regarding the wool. And therefore he would have to pay him, right? Pay the owner who's, for who, whose dye pigments who plants were stolen. O Dilma, or perhaps ye shevach simanin al Maybe we will say that there is an improvement by use of the dye. In other words, the dye is something separate. It's uh, in a sense from the wool itself. He only doesn't like the color. Well, we didn't get to that okay. yet. Let's see what happens. This is the thief dyed it, so presumably he did it. He wants to okay, and we're going to get to colors in a little bit momentarily. Okay, and he could say to them, "Ha, manche kamach." Okay, the robber could say, "Here, it's lying before you. Shakil mihu, take what you want." So the Gemara asks, "Shakalinhu, you're saying he could take it?" But my shakle, how is he going to take this die if that what was stolen? How is he going to get it back? Because remember, according to the Torah, we say that you've got to ideally return the item itself. And if not, then you've got to pay for the equivalent, right? So how else would you get that dye back? By using detergent? Is that what you're going to do? No, the Gemara explains and tells us, Safun avuri me'avar. The, the use of the detergent on the wall with the dye is going to remove the detergent, uh, remove the dye. Okay? All right? Hashava lo avid. It's not going to be able to make it return. Okay? Well, to get it back, it's he's not going to, right? Okay. He's not going to get it back. Right? Ella rather. Okay? Hacha by Hacha Bamayas Kinan. What then can we say we're dealing with here? Okay, the following. Kigon de gazalt semer v'simanin dechad. For example, let's say that he stole the wool and the plants with the dye pigments from one person. V'tsa'ave le'ahut semer v'hinach simani. And then he dyed that wool, okay? But that same wool that he stole with those same pigments, dye pigments. The kamahaderle, the nehalei Okay, and then he gives that back to the owner and says, uh, so to speak, here's your wool. Yesh shevach simanin al gav And therefore that would seem to be telling us that there is the idea of an improvement through the dye in regards to the wool. V'kam mahader simanim v'tzemer. And here, he's giving him back both the dye pigments and the wool together, okay, is what exactly what he stole, okay? So he's re is returning in that example the uh, item that was stolen. O Dilma, or perhaps the following, Ein shevach. Simanim al Semer. Okay, that we say there is no improvement through the use of the dye as applied to the wool. But Semer Mahadarle, and the wool, the robber is returning. Simanim lo Mahadarle. Shall we say then that the the dye pigments he's not returning, even though he's returning the dyed piece of wool? to the original owner, Amre. So let us say the following then. Tepukle Maybe we're going to take it in a situation that by having dyed the wool, 
it's increased in value. Nihale bedame. If that's the case, then let him simply give him the money. Okay? Lo, no, says the Gemara. Tzricha de Zaltziva. Maybe it's necessary because there's a chance that by dyeing the wool, he's actually decreased the value, okay, of the wool. All right? V buy it, Emma. And if you want, I might say the following. Kigon shetzava baho kupa. It's similar to a situation where someone could have uh, um, a, uh, uh, died and I'm going to use, there were two different explanations for Kupa. I'm going to use the one that it was a basket. Okay? Says one of the, okay? We're going to get to that in a second. Okay? All right, that's the other explanation. We're going to get to that in just another line. Okay? All right, so what happens? All right? Rabina Amar, says Rabina, Hacha b'mayaskina, what are we talking about? Kagon that summer dechad, a situation where the wool belonged to one, the simanin dechad, and the dye pigments, the plants, belong to another person. Ukaate kof, and along came a monkey. Okay, vitzavai lahaut simer behinach simani. Okay, and the monkey was the one. Okay, who. Okay, who dyed the wool? Okay, with the with the dye pigments, and at the same, okay, it's the bat in the vat. Where the monkey die? No, the monkey did die. His own wool, right? The monkey's wool got dyed through the dye in the vat. Okay, all right. So what happens? Okay. If that's the case, then we might say that there is an improvement to the quality of the wool by the addition of the dye. Okay? Because then the person who stole it can say, all right? Okay, the owner could say, at least of, of, the, of the dye pigments, give me back my dye pigments that are uh, that you've got there that you're holding on to okay or oh, dilma or perhaps ain shevach simanim that we say there is no improvement here through the use of the dyes al gabet simmer regarding the wall va'amarle and he can say it back to the other lit lach gabai klum Okay, you're claiming that you don't have anything that's by you, that you're holding on to it. And so therefore, the Mara wants us to clarify, attempt to clarify, okay, with another kind of example. Listen to the following Brita, says the Gemara. Tashma, okay? Take this example and see if it can apply to what we're saying of whether there is Shevach or not shavach by applying the dye to the wool. Okay? okay. What happens? Says our writer. Beged shitzvahu bikli pe orla. Let's say that now we're going to use plants. Okay. We'll get to that. Shrees is later in the in the um. Okay? It's later down. They're they're both there. Okay, so what happens? Remember, all of, now these are peels of fruit, okay, or plants that are considered orla, and we're going to spell that out, okay? That are, we're going to spell that out shortly, but it's very clear that because it's orla during the first years of the item, it is prohibited for benefit, right? Yidalek, that should be burned, alma. And therefore, what? Chazuta miltahi. That we can say here that this is a serious, a significant item. In other words, it's, it, that's, it's independent even after having been absorbed in the wool. Okay? What happens? Amar Rava says Rava. Hana'a, 
But because we say that that the, the change in the wool is clearly visible, and that benefit, and the Torah specifically prohibits that, okay, what happens? Why? How do we know? Titania. Because we have another bright that tells us, Arelim lo yechel. That's only the end part of the, actually, the Pasuk, right? And therefore, we say already, I may have thought that from that part of the Pasuk, it only prohibits the eating as benefit for Orla items, okay? But, says our Gemara, how do we know that one can't benefit it from it whatsoever? You can't die with it. Nor could you even say that you can use oil from those plants, okay? To, or fiber or any, any way for uh, that issue. Uh, lighting. Talmud Lomar says our text, okay? In other words, our pasuk. Va'arlotem arlato et perio arelim lo yeocheo. So we have the fact that there, the word relating to Orla is repeated three times, okay, in that one part. All right? So therefore, not only does it tell us simply prohibition of eating, but other kinds of benefit as well. Okay? Lerabot et kulam, and therefore it includes all these other examples. Now, let's go on, says our Gemara, because it wants again to try to cite a Brita that's going to give us further answers to that issue, okay, of our Sheva, all right? As follows. Beged shenit shetzva'o eat. So here we now get the other example, okay? That once again, we've utilized other kinds of plants, okay, that are considered shvish, uh, year, okay? And there, too, we have clear rules, okay, that once, at least minimally, that that the plant is no longer growing and available out in the fields, particularly for animals to eat it on its own, it has to be uh, B2, it has to be B or actually, has to be destroyed, okay? And if you have it in your home, all the more so that it also has to be destroyed, okay? So in this case, what do you do? You lake. It has to be burned. Shani hat. But maybe the, the example of shvis uh, uh, plants and things like that, okay, is different. Why? The amar kra, because in that case, the Pasuk says, Tihiyah, namely, Behavyato Tehe. Okay? That therefore, when it remains, okay, in other words, by the fact that so long as it remains, it's still in the status of Shemitah produce. That's the point. Okay? And in actuality, the Gemara is going to continue now and give us examples okay, of two kinds of particular plants that are used for dyes that are Shemitah items, okay? As we continue on the top of the Amun, Rava Rami, okay? Rava is attempts to deal with this issue by showing that there is a... Uh, Machlokas, right? There's a contradiction in text, Okay? And what does he tell us? It's not. On the one hand, we're taught the following. Beged shetzva'o beklipe orla. Okay, dye. Okay, that was taken from orla plants. Okay, it would seem to remain in the status of orla. The dye itself. Not just the plants. Yedalek. It would need to be burnt. Alma. Therefore, that would just tell us. Kazuta milta, okay, 
that it is a substantial or a major item. Okay? Or min hey. But then we have a contradiction by the following. Rivit dam if there is a small measure, a revise of dam, okay, from a body that is absorbed inside of a house, and therefore you have this corpse in this house, habayatame, okay, tumas ohel, okay, the body, the house is now totally tame, va'amre la, okay, and others. In another source, it says Habaya Tahor, that the house is Tahor. Yeah, we're going to get to that in just a second. Okay? All right? So what is it? How can we have that contradiction? Velo pligi. It's not really a contradiction or argument. Ha bekeli. In one case, dahavu ikara. Here we're talking about those utensils. Okay, that were there earlier, right? At the time the blood spilled. Right? Ha, the kelim da'atu levaso. Okay, and otherwise we're talking about utensils or items that were after the blood had been absorbed in the house. Nivla'a, the kasut. Absorbed, that's what I said. Okay, so nivla'o, the kasut. Let's say the blood, what about the fact that the blood may be absorbed in a garment? Okay? Ro'in et ro'in im mitkabeset haksut v'yotsemi menu revi'iz dam. We examine, we, what we do is we see if by washing the, the garment, okay, if that's going to exude, force the blood to exit, right? Tmei'ah. Then we would clearly say that it is tmea, ve'im lav, and if not, if that's not the case, tahora. Then we would say the blood is absorbed in the garment is not significant. Okay, it's not a separate element, and I could use that to compare it to the dye and say likewise. Then, okay, the dye is not shavach. It's not. It's not a separate item. Okay, Amar Rav Kahana. Now Rav Kahana tells us the following: You can't really use that parallel to compare to answer our issue. Why? Mikule Rivios Shanuka. This happened to be actually a kula when we talk about this minor measurement of blood, right? Why? Badam because we're talking about a situation where blood that exited the body either just before or just after the just death. Before it's tfusa. Yeah. It's just after it's Okay. So that's the case. And that right. So and that kind of blood, okay, is the Rabbanan in terms of its situation. Okay. Now since we've already cited an example where Rabbah has brought us what would appear to be a contradiction, the Gemara is going to cite another one for us. It's yeah, it's but Rusa, and therefore it's the Rabbana. Right, and, and therefore, therefore a we, visible stain is not. So it can't be considered Shabbat. It can't be considered, right? For our original issue. Now we're going to get to another example, and we're going to actually see that Rav is going to cite for us the names of two plants. And I'll just refer to those, in, in not into a lot of detail, but help us understand why he chose those specific examples. Okay? Rava Rami. Again, Rava is raising another possible contradiction. Ditznan. Okay? Namely, as follows. Mimin hatsivoin. If we take varieties of plants used for dyes, namely sfiche, sitim, vikotsa, we're going to take two kinds of plants. Okay, one. Okay, that we say is okay. The uh, the plants are sitim. 
okay, which is woad, which was had a plant with yellow buds and the uh, stems that could be used to produce an indigo dye. Okay, the kotsa is a safflower. It's the other way around. That's <laughs> okay, is a different kind of yellow thorny plant. Okay, that produces a yellow dye. Okay, yesh lehen eat. Those items, those plants, are subject to the requirement of shvis, right? Uva ledemehen shvis. And even when you exchange it for money, that money is subject to the requirement of shvis. Yesh lehen biur. They have this requirement of biur, of, okay, of destruction. Ula demehem biur. And likewise, any money for which they are exchanged has that requirement. Alma, as a doubt, therefore, eight sim yesh lehem mishum kdusha shvis. That therefore, any wood from them also, okay, from those plants would also be subject to that. Well, you can't eat them. These are shoots that come up after the plant is harvested. Okay. So they're twigs and they have the they thin of eight. Right. So that would be the case. Okay. So what ha happens? Or minhe. But we'll raise the following contradiction. How about the following? Ale kinim. If we have uh, leaves from reeds. We have leaves from uh, vines, right? That they are piled up for storage. Okay, okay on the ground. Okay, okay, and they're gathered for eating purposes. They also if that's the case, would seem to have the status, uh, okay, of the sanctity of Shri's. Le'et seem, but in regards to the fact that those twigs or pieces of wood were only collected really for for burning, for wood, for, for uh, kindling. kindling, thank you, okay, le'et seem, ein bahem mishum kedushat shri'it, then they would not have that status, okay, of Shvi's, Umishani, okay, and therefore we'll repeat and say as follows, teach it, Amakra, our Pasuk said, Le'achla, okay, for the purpose of eating, that was seen, B'mi shehana'ato ubiaro shavin, so when we say for its eating, we're talking about that the benefit is both with regards to its, okay, the removal of the Shemitah produce, okay, right? So what happens? The benefit is simultaneous. Right, that's what I'm going to get to, okay? I so that you have, have it, you have two things. You have two items here. Shehana'ato ubi'uro, that the benefit you get and the uh, burning, the destruction of it, Shavin, that they're equal, okay? And what happens, though? The exclusion of wood is because Yatsu Eitzim, Shahana Atan, Achar Biuran, that there's no real benefit for the burning of the wood until after it has been burnt. So you don't get the double benefit in the situation. Vaha Ika Eitzim, but there are trees, right? Dimashchan, Vahanatanu biuran shavin. Okay? That there the heat from it, which is beneficial, as well as the burning, do occur at the same time. And so, therefore, I might argue that they should be considered, okay, uh, still shavis. All right? In that case, right? All right? So, what happens then? Vama and Amar Rabba. All right? So, uh, what happens? Amarava is we go on just a little bit on the top of top of the next Amun. Stam eight seem lahasakahen omdim. No, our general rule says Rabba, 
is wood and you're generally kindling. That is meant for heating in that situation. Okay? And so he's arguing then, okay, that that is the point. And we'll stop right there on the top of that um, and pick up tomorrow. It's wood with that's oil. So it burns brighter and it's used for torches. So the benefit of seeing things. That could be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my we got a breakfast next door. What? Now we have a breakfast next door. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.